This is the hard work of applied research, the grunt work, the calculating, polling, and collecting of data. And if that isn't incentive enough, there's also the smell of beer. Their whole body smells like beer. <laughs> The Vermont Hops Project is a study being conducted by the University of Vermont Extension investigating the viability of growing hops in Vermont and the Northeast. There are 560 plants being grown here on three quarters of an acre. The binds, that's binds with a B, grow on strings and there can be several binds originating from one plant. 99% of hops production worldwide is for one purpose and one purpose only, to give beer its flavor and, yes, its aroma. On the hop plant, the part that's of particular interest to a brewer is the hop cone. It's a flower, and the part that um, is of most import would be the lupulin, which is um, on the inside. It's right next to the stem, and um, that's where all the essential oils and the alpha acids are. That's beer right there. Hops are not difficult to grow. In fact, many home brewers will raise a handful of hop vines alongside their vegetable gardens. But what Madden and the Vermont Hops Project want to achieve is to scale up production and to make hops a sustainable commercial crop in the Northeast. Hops are really exciting. I mean, we know they can be grown here. They were grown here 100, 150 years ago, but we don't know um, how to grow them today with today's varieties. Like you can plant them in your backyard. I've got some in my backyard, they look great, but when you start growing them on an acre basis, it's a very different ball game. And so figuring out how to fertilize properly so that you're not fertilizing too much so that the pests come and start to destroy them or you're wasting your money on fertilizer or um, figuring out how to fertilize them enough to maximize your yields. That's one of the big things that we're really focusing on. We have a variety trial and so we're looking at what varieties do grow well here. Already we can tell certain varieties just, they just don't thrive. <laughs> they get hit by disease, they get hit by potato leaf hoppers, they get hit by eastern common um, butterflies. There's been a lot of problems that we've discovered, but some are definitely doing much, much better. To collect the data, Madden and her colleagues cut down the binds, measure the length of each one, count the cones, and weigh the yields. It's tedious work but what they learn will establish the baseline for hops production in the Northeast for years to come. That's how you collect data. It's, you know, it, the important things are often the little things, like counting out 100 cones. Yeah, you could say right now that Nugget and Cascade have bigger cones than like Saz or Hallertau or Sterling because their cones are really little, but you don't know how that, what affects that. Like you could get bigger cones from a sterling plant if you were to do certain things, which is what we're trying to determine. Perhaps even like the number of binds, it's optimal per string um, and things like that and how that affects maturity. We found that more binds on a string delays maturity a little bit. Um, the cones are often smaller. I, this is anecdotal right now. This project is happening at a critical time as farmers new and old try to find their own niche in the public's ever-growing demand for local food. I've never been big on niche markets, but I don't really consider hops to be a niche market. I think it's more just of the local movement and, uh, you know, the bigger breweries, they're not interested in the people around here, but the smaller brewers are saying, yeah, you bring me something, I like it, I'll buy it, you know, right off the back of your truck. And um, I see the whole local food movement has really taken off. Demand is high especially from Vermont's micro and craft brewers. But a Vermont beer made from 100% locally grown hops and grain is still in the fermenting stages. The best stuff comes from everywhere. And, uh, you know, the American ideal is we can make the best stuff. Vermonters can make the best stuff. Given the opportunity to, to bring a, a product to market, it will be tapped. You know, I'd love to say it's the field of dreams. If you build it, they will come. Perhaps, I mean, that when the brewing, craft brewing industry made its resurgence 30 years ago, 40 years ago now, uh, you know, people were like, oh no, you know, craft brewing, what are you doing? And uh, there were innovators who basically said, if we build it, they will come. And, you know, the industry has built, has grown quite a bit. So small towns like Bristol can have a brew pub once again, you know, it's great. The next stage for the Vermont Hops Project 
is to get a small-scale hop harvester up and running. The vines will still have to be cut off the strings by hand, but the harvest will go much faster. Right now, I mean, we're picking about 560 plants, so that's, you know, 1,100 or so um, strings by hand. It's, we've been doing this for about a month. <laughs> and that's only a three-quarter acre, and there's 11 of us. <laughs> like the building of Rome, research takes a bit longer than a day to complete. But Madden and her colleagues know that every cone counted is one step closer to establishing a new crop in Vermont agriculture. In Alberg, I'm Keith Silva with Across the Fence.